Waiting has been really a significant part of my life and I want to talk to you today about some of the experiences that I've had that have really very um, deeply affected my life and my outlook on things and my ability to wait today. Uh, Habakkuk 2.3 says, though it linger, wait for it. It will not, it will certainly come and will not delay. And the Living Bible says, it will not be late a single day. And I've repeated that many, many times over. It will not be late a single day. I've got several uh, instances in my life that I want to share. One of them was um, a promise many years ago that I would be the boss. And um, the scripture that the Lord gave me was, people that I have not known will serve me. That's out of uh, Psalm 1823. And when I finished my doctor's degree in 1978, I applied for several jobs within the school system, principal's jobs and auxiliary jobs out of, hit, um, out of the um, main office and some of those things. And then I was trying to go back and figure that out in relationship to what God had told me, that people that I did not know will serve me, and I could not figure out where I could work within the school system because I'd been there so many years that people that I did not know, I would be their supervisor. Well, when I opened the center in 1989, which was obviously several years later, um, the Lord brought back to my mind that he had promised me that people that did not know me would serve me. Um, our center went international in 2004, but in uh, 1997, the Lord began to give me scriptures that we would go international. We had opened in 89, and, and um, so about eight years later, I was getting scripture after scripture after scripture, and I have a whole folder of scriptures that the Lord has given me about international work. And one of them is, I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. And that's out of Exodus 9.16. And I remember in 2004, um, I came into the office one day, and that day, and Cheryl was working with something, uh, putting something in a frame, and I just thought she was getting some things ready for the annual meeting, and I walked on by, and in five minutes, she carried in this uh, email that she had framed, and it was from Sierra Leone, and the email said, we have opened our center and um, you now have a center in Sierra Leone, Africa. I cried all day because I thought this was something that I would never get to see. And now we have multiple centers in multiple countries and several that are on our emerging list. But we had to wait for it. Um, Deuteronomy 28, 9 and 10 said, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. And uh, those have been pretty significant scriptures as I've thought about our international work and what God is developing that we can do. I think about uh, Pinellas Park, Florida, that uh, opened in 2002. And I had have a college friend, Mary, that lives there. And for 13 years, she prayed that God would help them to open a center there. And so after 13 years of prayer in 2002, that came into being. And here's another illustration that I think is pretty exciting. Um, in, um, I'd gotten a call from over near Toledo, Ohio, and I went to meet a gal over there, her name was Barb. And uh, we met for lunch, and she had a little boy with her, uh, about two years old, and she had him in a high chair, and he sat there all the time that we talked, and she told me about the vision that she had for their community, and how she wanted to open a ministry to women, and, and she had a couple of school-age children, and I could tell that she had a real heart for this vision, but the timing wasn't right. And I finally said to her, 
Barb, I think eventually you'll probably get this done, but you know, with your family at the age that it is, um, I don't think now's the time. So I got back in the car. I'd been at, by the time I got home, I'd been on the road for about 14 hours that day. And as I got back in the car to head home, I thought, what a wasted trip. She'll never get this done. And 13 years later, she called me and she said, I don't know if you'll remember me or not, but Riova, and then she told me this story, and I said, oh yes, Barb, I do remember you, and she said, I'm ready to open the center. And uh, we opened that center in 2007. I want to tell a little tale on Joanne uh, about waiting. Um, I had been praying because our work was getting really heavy and, and I needed some help. And I had been praying and praying, and and um, I felt like that Joanne Rhodes was supposed to come to headquarters, but she had um, a child still at home that was just starting um, high school. And um, finally, when that child became a senior in high school, I met with her and her husband Jerry and told her what I had in mind. I had enough money. Um, donated to cover her salary for a year and I told her what I wanted and she said oh Riova I don't think I can do that job and she began to cry and I said I know Joanne you can do that job because I've been waiting for four years for Jenna to grow up so you can come so I think waiting in that situation is another wonderful example that if we wait and I and I, here's a little thing that I think is really neat when I started talking to Joanne over our lunch. She started to cry and she said, I was talking with my daughter-in-law last week and she asked me, Joanne, if you could have any job that you want, what would your job do? What would your job be? And she said, I'd love to go work for headquarters. And so a week later, I'm offering her a job with a salary to go with it. And um, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the struggle that I had living with Doug. My, many of you know that my husband grew up in the welfare system and uh, was very badly abused in lots of ways and, and abandoned and all kinds of things. And so that really affected relationships with him. He always had trouble with relationships. He was very intelligent, but the social part, he, he, just, he just wasn't there. And um, especially after our boys left, things got really, really difficult around our house. And, and uh, I had just asked the Lord over and over again to release me, and he wouldn't. And um, finally he said to me one day, I will take him out of your life when I have completed in you the reason that I put him in your life. And so I knew that eventually I would be freed from this very difficult situation. But from the time that the Lord told me that until the time that my husband died, it was 15 years. And uh, so that's another example of waiting. And for me, that was probably the greatest struggle in waiting as far as my life's concerned. Isaiah thirty eighteen said, Blessed are all those who wait for him. So I guess my challenge today is um, if the Lord has promised you something and it has not come to pass yet, just wait. Because Habakkuk said it will not be late one single day.